everybody. Spending time in the great outdoors not only takes away the stress of everyday life, but it opens new doors to amazing experiences. And one of the biggest challenges to enjoy those new experiences is the weather. The unpredictable changes that it brings can make a great adventure and turn it into a miserable day. And the best way to combat Mother Nature when she isn't being so nice is having the proper clothing. You guys, this is a game changer. In this episode, we're going to look at what I believe to be the best clothing, wool, down, and fleece. To see how each one will excel over the other in the many different conditions and the many different situations that you may face. What we're going to do is look at each fibers, the pros and cons, and how they perform in the different situations and the different conditions. So with that being said, the first one we're going to look at is wool. Wool is a natural fiber that comes from the hair of animals, and it's been used to make clothing for thousands of years, and it's still popular today. It's one of my favorite clothing when it comes to winter and cold weather. And not only is it for jackets, of course, wool socks, pants, hats, or gloves and mittens. Wool from different types of animals have different names. For example, merino wool is made for merino sheep hair, which is softer and less scratchier. Cashmere wool is made from cashmere goat hair, which is warmer, softer, and lighter, but more delicate and expensive. Cuviate wool comes from mux oxen, which is the softest, and eight times warmer than sheep wool, lighter and extremely durable. Now the advantage to wool, or the pros and cons, wool is naturally water resistant or semi-water repellent, but not waterproof. And can be a good choice for those cold temperatures and wet climates. Wool has fantastic wicking capabilities that is versatile for all temperatures. It's not only great for colder temperatures, but for warmer temperatures when you're hiking or traveling in hot and dry climates. Wool can keep you cooler than synthetic fibers or cotton. A lightweight merino wool shirt or hoodie is great to hike in during the summertime, plus it has great UV protection from the sun. Ah! Wool tends to be extremely durable, which makes it the best material to hike in. No worries going through the brush, and if you take care of it, it will last a lifetime and some. Well, it's antimicrobial and antibacterial, which has fantastic odor-resistant properties, meaning it needs to be washed less. And for those longer trips, even when using a base layer, there's nothing like a pair of long underwear tops and bottom, even for sleeping in. Less funk transferring to your expensive down. Plus, you don't have to worry about stinking. And for those people around you, if they stink, well, it's your problem because you didn't educate them about wool. A huge pro that can be a lifesaver, it will keep the wear warm even if it gets wet. A few years ago, I was on a winter trek in the Boundary Waters. I broke through the ice. I was able to stay warm to set up camp and make a fire to dry out. Wool is also flame retardant, and if it does start to burn, the flames will extinguish itself instead of spreading. When wearing wool by the fire, you don't have to worry about those sparks from your campfire. Wool is an environmentally friendly material, if you're into that, because it's natural. Wool can biodegrade in three to four months if buried in the ground. Wool is somewhat wind resistant due to its tight weave fibers. It blocks wind better than synthetic fibers like fleece, but it cannot replace a hard shell layer. If you're expecting cold winds, you'll need something a bit more wind resistant than wool, such as a rain jacket. Perfect time and it's starting to rain. Glad I brought that shell. It's always good to have a shell with you, a rain jacket. Even when you're filming, go figure. Wool is also mildew resistant, naturally inhibits mildew. Now for the cons. Nowadays, they tend to be a little expensive but if you go to a second-hand store, a garage sale, a yard sale, you can really score. Depending on the type and quality of wool the clothing is made of, wool can be itchy and uncomfortable to some people to wear. But some types of wool are extremely soft and comfortable, like merino or alpaca. 
and wool takes longer to dry than fleece and when washing they tend to shrink so you have to hang them up to dry after you wash and do not throw them in the dryer because they will shrink and one last con is wool is heavy so you want to wear it when you're hiking you don't want to throw it in your pack there's other materials that are a lot lighter to put in your pack than wool so wool should be on you as you are hiking on the body and not on the pack unless you're pulling a poke then you can store all the wool you want the second material we're going to look at is down down is actually the plumage found underneath the exterior feathers of waterfowl such as duck, geese, and consists of soft and fluffy wispy filaments. Down has insulation property that has an unstructured nature cluster known as loft, which helps traps air to provide warmth. The down rating number is a measurement of down quality, meaning the cubic inches of loft of one ounce of that specific down produces. Down jackets with a high fill power or rating number are usually lighter, less bulky, and more packable than jackets with a low fill power that are equally warm. Down provides the best insulation of any fiber used in the manufacture of winter garments. Even with modern manufacturing, down still performs better than any synthetic material. Down is an ultralight hiker's dream. An average down jacket contains three to four ounces, 85 to 115 grams of down filling, and weighs 10 to 16 ounces, 280 to 450 grams in total. And if you're willing to spend a little bit more, you can get them even lighter. And you can also get down pants, booties, mittens and gloves, or hats. One of the biggest benefits down has over wool and fleece is the fact that it's highly compressible and packable. A down jacket stuffs into a bundle that's about one liter in size. And some compress even smaller, which makes it a great material to store in your pack when hiking. Lightweight and it takes up very little space in your pack. If taken care of, down can last for decades. Natural down does not degrade as fast as synthetic material, and it can be compressed and decompressed over and over and always have the same loft, where synthetic will lose its loft over time. Voila! One thing with down, it can be damaged when you store it compressed. When you're ready to put it in your pack, then you compress it. Otherwise, when you go to store it, make sure you hang it up to fully loft in storage. Like wool, down is environmentally friendly and a big pro for some people today. Down is really fashionable these days. And you guys, I just don't like fads. Hey, that's a nice looking down jacket you have there. These are what everybody's wearing today. They're called puffy jackets. Is it warm? I don't know, but hey, I look good. So when you're on the trail, wear the heavier clothes like wool or fleece and take your down and store it in your pack where it makes the pack lighter. And when you get to camp, then you can take that down out and start your fashion show. Now for the cons. Down is very expensive. For those high-end ultralight jackets can cost you up to $200, $300. And they're not cheap. Right now, they're a little harder to find in those second-hand stores. But just be patient. When the fat is over, they will flood the market. When down gets wet, it tends to stay wet and loses its insulation property. And this is because the water will cause the down to lose its loft by causing the feathers to stick together. That's why you never want your down to get wet. There'll be no loft to trap that body heat. You always want to protect that down from rain and water. Down is not so durable. So again, when hiking on the trail, the nylon shell can easily be torn in the brush. And please, you guys, don't wear them by the fire. The sparks will damage your jacket in a heartbeat. Now, before we move on to fleece, there's one thing I like to mention that I noticed that no one talks about is that down warms up faster than any material. For an example, when I'm in my hammock and I have wool or fleece underneath me, it takes a while to warm up. But with down, there's instant warmth. Ooh, it's cold. It is cold. <sighs>
It's amazing how fast these down jackets warm up. It's with the nylon shell has better wind protection than the other two. Now for our last fiber, fleece. Fleece is a synthetic fiber, polyester, and it was first introduced to the public in the early 1980s, and it was an alternative to wool. You can also get fleece pants, hats, gloves, Fleece is less expensive than wool and down, and it's a great insulator. And you can find them in those secondhand stores, any garage sale, yard sales, for almost nothing. It's lightweight, and it comes in various weights for ability to have different levels of warmth. And it's very comfortable to wear. Fleece absorbs much less water than wool and dries quicker. Both air and water passes through fleece easily. And when sweating, the moisture on your skin will vaporize and pass through the fleece and dissipate into the air. Moisture doesn't get trapped in the fabric. As a result, you won't get soaked in your own sweat. And if you do get a little sweaty, you will dry quickly. A light fleece jacket are great to hike with. I still prefer a wool shirt or hoodie underneath my fleece jacket. And they're great to have on the outside when you're hiking because they're very durable. Polyester fibers are very strong. Different types of fleece also offer different levels of breathability. This is the case because the fibers are woven differently. Thick fleece with dense weave doesn't breathe as well as thin fleece with a looser weave. Air just can't pass through the dense weave as easily. An average fleece jacket weighs 8 to 12 ounces, about 226 to 340 grams. This is four to five ounces, around 110, 140 grams lighter than a comparable wool jacket. Now for the cons. When fleece gets soaking wet, it cannot provide insulation, so you have to quickly dry it out. But can provide some warmth, if not too wet. It will retain some loft, which provides insulation by trapping body heat. And yes, it is not environmentally friendly. And that's because of the microplastics. But the good news is, like I said earlier, they're so available in those secondhand stores or really any store, and they're really inexpensive. So it's a great fiber to start off with if you're gonna do hiking or camping or any adventure. Sometimes llamas and alpacas are referred as fleece. This may cause some confusion. In this case, fleece refers to a natural fiber, not synthetic. Fleece from llamas and alpaca is wool. My grandpappy told me that alpaca is fleece. Haven't you ever heard Mary had a little lamb as fleece with white as snow? Come on, man! It is seven times warmer than sheep wool per gram of fiber and lighter and softer while still having the same property as wool except for they're not as durable. I don't recommend hiking with these in the brushy area and when it comes to campfires I wouldn't wear them by the campfires where the sparks are flying because these are not cheap. Now I hope you found this episode to be helpful and insightful for your next adventure. And if you like this video, please hit that like button down below. It really does help this channel. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below and that little bell icon on the side there. And that'll notify you when the next episode is coming out. And if you have any questions or comments, please write them down below. I always love hearing from you guys. Well, this is the Marine. Thank you for watching, and God bless. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden.